Hello everybody and welcome back to another Minecraft video. Today I'm going to be explaining to you attributes and modifiers. These were added into the game yesterday when the snapshot came out and I covered it briefly in my video. I didn't really go into too much depth and what I've been doing since that video and now is I've just been learning as much about this as I can so I thought I'd make this video to explain to you everything about attributes and modifiers. Now this is in the snapshot stage however it seems like the basic foundation for this system has been laid down so what I'm going to be telling you shouldn't change too much. Um, there's new attributes and things that are going to be changed uh, but let's actually start off with the attributes because that's a very easy thing to understand. Now what an attribute is is it's like when you punch or you punch someone and do damage to them, and um, the speed that you move at, the height that you can jump at, things like that are all attributes and I don't know how many of them are going to be added into the final product um, but at the moment there are a few of them that have been added already and so these attributes are going to be able to be modified by items, possibly potion effects and enchantments as well. I don't know what's going on with those at the moment um, but you can do it with items. So when you're holding an item or you're using one these modifiers come into play and they change the attributes of a player. Now this doesn't just apply to the player, it applies to all mobs as well so that means a lot of customization is going to come into the game. This is mainly a tool for map makers, I don't think it will affect the vanilla game that much unless they decide to bring in items that have these modifiers um, but for map makers it gives you a huge control over what you can do with the game. So let's have a look inside of this chest here. I've made some example items to show you. So this one is called Everything So Far. Uh, what you see here are six different modifiers that have been added to the game. So we have Mob Follow Range, Maximum Health, Knockback Resistance, Attack Damage Speed and then Attribute.Name.Generic.Spawn Reinforcements. And so that one I think is its code name and for some reason uh, maybe a bug it's not actually displaying its name. But these are all the different modifiers that can change the things that are happening in the game and they're pretty straightforward right there. You can tell that max health is the amount of health that you have. And so when we apply these to, um, to different items we can do two different types of modifying here. You can see we've got a percentage and then a minus there which is a whole number so that affects the base value of this. Um, but what you can do with these is just affect various attributes of the player and then when they're using these items um, it's going to affect them in the game. So let's put these in a hotbar and at the moment I don't think this has been correctly implemented. For example we're going to feel the effects of this item when we hold it in our hand rather than when it's equipped. But this is just an idea of some of the things you could do with these items. You can see perhaps if a player had this equipped on their head and it works like that as well um, then they get increased field of vision or they can zoom in like this. So that's a useful example of what you can do of it so far. And so as I flick through these, you're going to see my field of view change a lot, and that's because they all affect speed. And even blocks have this as well. So if I was holding a block that added to my uh, attack damage, then if I hit people with it, it's going to do more damage. So now that we've gone over the basics of attributes and modifiers, let's take a look at this in a little more detail. First of all, I want to point out that that one at the bottom isn't a bug. That says generic.spawn reinforcements, where it should say zombie.reinforcements because it's, it is specific to zombies. Um, so over here, I've written down the six that have been implemented into the game already. Uh, you can tell what they do by their name, and you can see they all have generic dot with the exception of this one, which is zombie.spawn reinforcements. So some of these attributes will be specific specific to certain mob types and you can see the generic one can basically be applied to any mob type or player. So if we go around the back here I've speculated a bit into what could be added into the game and given you some examples and this one right here bow drawback speed I think was tweeted by Dinnerbone or hinted at by someone um, so this is quite likely to come to the game that means the rate that you fire your bow and arrow at could be increased by a modifier and so there could also be an attribute for fall damage so when you fall from a height you might take more or less damage depending on what modifiers you have attached to you there's also the sneaking speed so something like this could be increased with modifiers and then you have your attack speed so the rate that you can actually hit enemies at could also be modified then over here we have an XP multiplier that's something that I speculated could be added um, so when you pick up XP you might get an extra amount depending on what modifiers you have and then last of all we have things that are specific to the mob AI, so for example a skeleton's accuracy could be increased depending on the modifiers as could their firing rate, that could be increased or slowed down and also the creeper fuse could be modified through the system as well. So now I'm going to go over the modifiers in more detail. I'm going to walk you through how this information is stored in the game. So the game has to store information about the player, for example where they are, what items they have in the inventory or how much health they have and it stores it in a format called MBT. 
and so if you were to open up the correct file in an MBT editor you'd see all the information about the player including what items they had. So at the moment we can attach these modifiers to an item so if you found the items compound that would have a bunch of information about what item ID it was, how much damage it had taken and things like that. And then what you would need to do is create a compound that's called tag and inside that compound you would make a list called the attribute modifiers and this is a list type which is a compound. And so then inside that you would list these six different variables which go towards what the modifier is and so let's start off with these two over here they're called universal unique identifier least and the same thing most so UUID least and most these are two random strings of numbers which are there to make the modifier unique so if you were to just put in a small number like one or two then it's quite likely at another point you'll have another modifier with the same number so you have a random string of numbers which means the likelihood of having those numbers twice is very very small and so quite likely to not happen now both of these are stored in a format called long then over here we have two other ones which are um, stored in the format called string and we have the attribute name which is this one over here so any of these means you would be um, applying this modifier to your movement speed or your health and then the name is a name that you can simply give to it now it doesn't appear that having the same name twice for two different modifiers would affect this in any way uh, but a name is just something for you to give it so you can identify what it is then over here we have the operation which is an int and the amount which is a double and I'll go into these in more detail in a moment but that's basically how a modifier is stored in MBT data so now I'm going to show you how the game will calculate what the modifier does to the initial attribute. So let's say for this explanation we're dealing with attack damage. So you have a sword that does plus one, but it also has a modifier which adds another point to it. So the game has to calculate that um, so that it does plus two. And so I'm going to explain to you um, the way in which it calculates it. And it uses these two things right here, the operation and the amount. So first of all, there are three types of operation in the game and you're just specifying which one it will use and the amount is a variable that you're going to throw into the calculations that the game makes and so what I should point out here is that you can have multiple different modifiers affecting the attribute names all at once and so these calculations have been chosen so that they all work together if you have several multipliers um, trying to affect the same attribute all at once. So let's start off by taking a look at the key so we can understand what goes into these calculations. We have B which is the base, so that's the attribute's initial damage. If we had a sword that would probably have um, a base attribute. So let's say we have like a sword that has a damage value of 2, then that's the base right there. And then we have V for value. The value is actually just the amount over here, so whatever that number is, is what V is equal to. And then we have T for total, so that's the running total which will get either increased or decreased uh, throughout the calculations that we have. So we have three different types of operations, 0, 1 and 2. 0 is simply the base plus the value equals your new base. So let's say you had several different types of operations. It wouldn't matter what order you did them in, you'd always end up with the final base being the same uh, each time. So then in our second operation, which is operation one, we take the total. Now the first time we do that, we actually take the base value um, and then we add to that the base times the value. So the value down there, which is the variable from the modifier, and that gives us a new total. So let's say we had several operation ones because we have several modifiers. It doesn't matter what order we do those calculations in, we're always gonna end up with the same final total, which is very important. And the same thing is gonna happen with operation two as well. So operation two, we take our current total and we multiply that by our value plus one. So the variable from the modifier plus one, and again, as I said, um, doesn't matter how many times you do that or what order you do them in, you're always going to end up with the same final total. And so the last calculation that is made will give you the final total, which will be the modifier. So let's do an example so you understand what's going on here. We have four different modifiers that are going to affect our base value of our attribute and give us a final output. So our base value is going to start off at five. We're going to have one modifier which is of operation type 0, that's value is equal to 3, one of type 1 which value is equal to 0 0.5 and then we're going to have two operation 2's which value is 1 and 2. So we do the first operation first of all, that value is 3 which we're simply going to add to the base amount which gives us a new base amount of 8. So if there were to be a second operation here then we would take 8 and add it with its new value. 
So then we go down to operation one because this is the um, first one that we're doing we're taking our base and that is becoming our total. So our total plus the base value uh, when multiplied by 0 0.5 which is basically halving it so that gives us a new total of 12. Now if we add another calculation here as well um, the new total would be 12 and it wouldn't be 8 as well is something to point out. So operation 2 we have two of these coming in um, our new total is 12 after we've done operation 1 and so what we're going to do is take that number and multiply it by our value plus 1 which is 2. So in this case we're simply going to double this so we get 24 in total and then we're going to do our second operation which is 24 times 2 plus 1 so we're going to multiply that by 3 which gives us a total of 72 so if you did these in either order you would always get the same final total so these three operations are obviously three different ways to modify the score however they're designed in a way that means that no matter how many modifications are being made and in whatever order the game calculates them in it's always going to end up with the same modification to that attribute so operation zero is really straightforward because it's a simple add to the base value and whereas operation one and operation two are actually percentage increases so operation one uh, let's say this was a 10 percent increase right here and we were to do that two times we would end up with a total of 120 percent um, 120 because we have our initial base value and then we've increased it by 10% each time whereas if we do this with operation 2 then the first one will add 10% and then the second one will add 10% to 110% so you'd end up with 121% um, so that is the key difference between those two types of operation so from a map maker's perspective these three calculations right here give you a ton of control over the modifiers they mean that you can make really customizable and flexible RPG stat systems and uh, upgrade systems and things like that as well so they give you a lot of control over the modifiers and in general this update has been very exciting there are probably going to be more things coming along to do with modifiers and attributes soon as well maybe even command blocks will have the power to manipulate modifiers and a lot of this is just going to be really interesting so as always if you've enjoyed the video please do give it a like and help support the channel and other than that thank you for watching and I will catch you next time